find the distribution of the stress around the hole. Study the stress concentrations. Concentrations. Okay. So um, that is our goal, and the problem statement is this: If we would imagine a, a plate, okay, and assuming this is a uniform plate, and which means that the cross section is uniform there, and for this plate, it is under. Um, the uniform, uh, we call the uniaxial tension. That means loading as a uniform tension only applied in one direction, and let me call the magnitude is sigma here. Okay, so here uh, this plate has the dimensions. Here you see I draw it in the horizontal direction pretty large, and so here is our coordinate system. Let me check x and y. Again, here for for these chapters, we our focus is still on the two-dimensional problem. Okay, so that is the problem. And if you remember uh, before, when we uh, start with our discussion of the stress functions, and for this kind of simple case, uniaxial tension as a loading, and we could have uh, this option, say, for example, A1 x squared and plus um, A2 and xy and plus A3 and y squared. We try the second degree polynomial. And at this moment, if you still have a doubt why I choose so, then basically you fall behind too much. Okay, so try to catch up. So based upon this, and we know that the stress um, respect to y squared, that one gives us a distress in x directions. So for this one, that is 2a3. And for this one, we know the given is sigma. So from here, we can determine that a3 is sigma divided by 2. Okay. On the other side, the sigma y, and that is equal to 0, and that is c partial x squared. So from here, we can find out the a1 equal to 0. And also, we have no string stress, so partial square of phi, and partial x, partial y, and here should be minus. Okay. And this one will give us is actually equal to zero. So under these situations, we can see for a plate under uniaxial tensions, and the correct uh, every stress function should be taken by this form. Okay, so that is our starting point. And right now we impose a defect. So for example, at the center here, uh, let me introduce a hole. And the hole uh, has, uh, say, um, hole has the radius A, so diameter equal to 2A. And for a hole, and we, to study the hole, we also introduce a local corner system, and R theta. So basically, around the hole, is a little bit more convenient if we describe in terms of R and theta. Okay, so basically here in bounding is the transformation of the stress, or maybe boundary conditions between the X, Y, and R theta corner systems. Okay. So, based upon the understanding, if a plate without a hole, this is our starting point. Right now, for this plate with a hole, how can we come up with an appropriate error stress function for us to follow up the procedures and then to find out, hopefully, the closed form, uh, the distribution of the stress basically by taking these kind of calculations to get a close form expression of the stress. So that is a goal for this section here, okay? Again, uh, here in this section, our topic is on the um, stress-based formulations. 
And from back to the logic, then we introduce the area stretch functions. And area stretch, stretch functions, and basically that is composed of the polynomial and something like this one. And again, to get the right form of the polynomial is not trivial. Through the exercise and through the homework, and I believe I'm kind of trying to get you to familiar with some common guess of the good polynomial for certain problems like this one. Okay. So today, this I'm going to introduce you uh, another skill and for good guess of the uh, area stress function. Okay. So uh, now for we back to this problem. For this problem, we have the plate and with the defects here. And assuming the plate has the dimension, say x dimension is 10 times, at least 10 times larger than 2a. Okay, we make such assumption, which means um, the hole is so small compared to the, we call the remote site. Remote site, that means any place <coughs> that is distant, very distant away from the hole. I would say very distant, that means at least 10 times larger, longer than the, the feature dimension here, okay? So we make the assumption uh, the hole compared to the, the plate size should be relatively small. So under that situation, the first one we we'll look at here, uh, at the remote site, okay, for remote, for remote that means I'm saying, uh, for example, as R approaching to infinity, Okay, assuming the plate is infinite in size. So approaching infinity basically is approaching to where the uniform loading apply. Okay, so again, if the hole is very small, and if we talk about the distribution of the stress at the remote side, we can pretty much uh, approximate the stress due to that small uh, defect. It won't have any significant influence on here. So very good assumption is this. We still say, okay, the stress on this side is pretty much the same as without a hole. I think that is a very, very good assumption. Okay, so under that situation, then we might come up with something. So in here, for remote side, we say the stress still the same as we are given, so that means sigma x equal to sigma and sigma y equal to zero tau x y equal to zero. Okay, that's a good approximation. Okay, and actually this is true. Um, this is true, okay. So from here we can deduce the corresponding stress functions is equal to sigma to y squared, right? That is the, based upon the preparation we have here, right? Okay, right now for those information are, uh, are uh, how to say, it? Uh, retained to the plate with the hole. Again, right now is those one from this point onward, I'm talking for the model is a model as, as a plate with a hole. Keep this in mind, okay. And for this one, let me try to convert it into a polar corner system in terms of R and theta to see uh, what's going on there. Okay, so for this case, basically you can see Y equal to R times sine theta. So let me introduce that one to here, two and R squared, sine squared theta. And again, my goal is to convert into the pure sine and not square here. So we can further implement and say sine squared theta equal to one half and one minus cosine two theta. So let me get the further one, so that will be sigma divided by four, and r squared, and times one, minus sigma squared four r cosine two theta. Okay. So in terms of the polar corner systems, this is the, the form, this is a form the corresponding form of the area stress functions, okay? So based upon this one, then we begin to make a deduction. We try to deduce these around the hole, 
okay? We want to see what's going on here in sigma r and sigma theta and tau r theta. We're going to find, we're going to answer the question, what are these? To find this is as long as we can come up with a certain um, error search function, error stretch function in terms of r theta. As long as we can figure out the form here, then are we able to calculate this one? Yes, right? So this one, I forgot the term there, and uh, basically is equivalent, uh, second degree derivative in the uh, polychromic system, just like this. And later the slides will show that equation. So the key is this, as long as we can find this one, then everything will be very straightforward. So now the key is how to find this one. So now we're going to deduce, and uh, people smart, very smart, and then they propose like this. They suggest the patterns, the patterns of the stress functions will be the same. Uh, L in the everywhere inside within the bound within the domain of the plate. So the pattern is this observing this one, so this the first one is a pattern is function of r. Okay, actually explicitly r squared. The second pattern, sorry, this is r squared. Okay. The second pattern is sum the r times the cosine two theta. So the people suggest uh, such a two forms here. They call the sigma one and the function of r similar to this one plus sigma as a function of t and function of r, similar to this one times cosine two theta. This suggests around the whole, the corresponding error function will be like this. And this is not the first attempt, won't be, because the people have tried the couple things, and in summary, this is a good one, okay? So for our learning, why not we just start from here? Okay, I think this is a very good reasoning because simply look at this pattern. Good? Okay. So once we start from here, and again, the Gaumann equation, if you remember, the Gaumann equation for error stress function is this. Uh, four. The operator is four, right? Okay, and for the polar corner system, and we know uh, from the handout, from the appendix, whatever, we know we are able to expand this one in terms of R and theta, the fourth order derivative kind of the things in terms of the polar form system. So once we have the form be built up, the one way for us to, to calculate the two basically is to substitute into the government equations of this stress function we substitute into here, and for this one, basically, see that is the linear combination of the two terms. So, luckily, in this way, we can find out is this we simply put into uh, force of the V1 equal to zero, and then the force of V2 cosine to theta equal to zero. We simply uh, conduct the two. Uh, subsets and then individually we will be able to find the V1 and V2. And once when we found it, then we simply compose there and then we try to come up with this one. Okay? So that is the whole um, the thinking concept. And again, during our um, solution here, because that is a force order uh, differential equations, when we try to integrate, we're going to introduce uh, quite a big numbers of the integration constant. For this one will be four integration constant. For this one will be four in the integration constant. So in total, eight integration constants will be introduced as, uh, into the general solution of the individual function there. Okay, so those kind of integration constants uh, should be resolved by appropriate boundary conditions, by appropriate uh, physical constraint to the province. So that is the remaining. 
the remaining uh, steps that I'm going to show in slides is the, keeping this in mind. The first step, the first portion, is on the solution of these four general solutions. And then the second portion is um, applying the boundary conditions and then to get these things uh, expressed. Okay, so we, I'm going to fire up the uh, slides. Okay, we can take a break. <laughs>